Today in Florence, Alabama, the Bears from Lenore Ryan arrive for their first ever national championship game. And they come armed with the most prolific rushing attack in college football. On the other side, the title game regulars from Northwest Missouri State making their record eighth appearance in the title game. It's the Division II National Championship decided on the field in Florence, Alabama now. You're watching the NCAA Division II Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas for the 28th season from Florence, Alabama. This is the D2 title game, Northwest Missouri State against Lenore Ryan. Here's how they got here. Lenore Ryan put its offense to the test in the mud and the muck. They didn't attempt a single pass in a 42 to 14 win at home against Westchester. On the other side, Northwest Missouri State in a back and forth affair defeated their nemesis from Grand Valley State at home in Maryville, Missouri. So two number one seats advanced to the title game here in Florence. Welcome everybody. Merry Christmas. Tom Hart alongside John Contemi. Two teams coming at this game from two very different angles. Northwest Missouri State is used to the bright lights, the big games. They know their way around town. No Ryan here for the very first time. I think it's going to help Northwest. In, in the championship game, the coaching staff's been together. They've been in this spotlight before. And on the other side, Lenore Ryan's just going to do what they do. They run the football, the triple option. It's all downhill, and it's all led from the quarterback making the right reads at the line of scrimmage. And Lenore Ryan will make a change at quarterback today, and this is big news. Tavarius Jones will be making his fifth start today, but it has been just Justice who led them through the playoffs. Regardless who's at quarterback, this is the team that relies on the triple option. Well, Justice Justice has been the guy, Tom, over the last three games. He's been the man making the decisions at the line of scrimmage, but ultimately it's going to be the downhill running of Isaiah Whitaker, averaging close to five yards per carry. You've got guys like Gerard Spears, Graham Duncan, Michael Patrick. It's downhill and it's effective because they know who they are. They're going to run in between the tackles and try to stretch you on the edge. But at quarterback, Jones is going to have to come back making his fifth start of the season to make great decisions at that position. On the other side for Northwest Missouri State, they come into this game with big game experience, that's for sure, from a power conference in Division II and fifth in the nation in scoring. How do they do it? Well, two heads at quarterback, one who can pass and one who can run. Well, it's Trevor Adams. He's going to get the start. He's very accurate throwing the football. He leads all Division II quarterbacks in percentage. But the spark of this offense may be the backup quarterback, Brady Bowles. He runs the football effectively, close to five yards per carry, 11 touchdowns on the ground. But Trevor Adams, he's the guy that's going to spread you out in the offense. 27 touchdowns. He knows how to protect the football with only six interceptions. He's the guy that will get the start. A return to glory for Northwest Missouri State in the first ever visit to an NCAA championship game for the Bears from Lenore Ryan. Title to be cited on the field. Kickoff coming up next from Brawley Stadium in Florence, Alabama. Ready for kickoff in Florence, Alabama. And moments ago, third-year head coach Adam Doro from Northwest Missouri State addressed his team. And what's on the line today? Nobody in here has to be perfect today. I don't have to be perfect. Our coaching staff doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Play with great energy today, great enthusiasm, and do your 111th. Stay in the fray for 60 minutes. Keep chopping wood. Looking for their fourth national title. Now down to the field, the third member of our crew. Let's say hello to Quint Kessinick. Give you a little background on these two schools, Lenore Ryan, Hickory, North Carolina. It is a very small liberal arts college, only 1,800 students. They had big time success in the 1950s and 60s. They've been dormant. They're back, though, undersized and the underdogs. Across the way, Northwest Missouri State, Maryville, Missouri. It's about 100 miles north of Kansas City. Bigger, 6,800 students and higher expectations. 25 conference champions. The guys on the far side, they took a flight here, nice and easy. Lenore Ryan eight and a half hour bus trip 460 miles away a chance to get to know your teammates on that bus ride down from hickory 
Ben Truen will get us started today. Northwest Missouri State won the toss. They elected to defer and they'll put the ball in the hands of this Lenore Ryan triple option attack. Gerard Spears, prolific returner, 24 yards per kick return this season. 14 0 Northwest Missouri State, 13 1 Lenore Ryan. Spears, no chance to return. And here's our first look at the Bears and their offense, which needs just 31 yards to become the best rushing offense statistically in NCAA football history across all levels. It'll be Tavarius Jones, a sophomore, who gets the start. And Tom, he's making his fifth start of the season. He had a neck injury a couple weeks ago. He's a big body at 6'2", 200 pounds, and he's not afraid to put that football under his right arm and move the chains with his legs. November 2nd against Carson Newman, starter Miles Freeman went down with a muscle tear in his leg. Jones took over. He then got injured. That opened the door for Justice, who turned his ankle in practice on Thursday. Ground game to start, and it's Isaiah Whitaker who picks up two straight up the middle. Let's take a look at how Northwest Missouri and Lenore Ryan plan for success, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Tom, offensively, Lenore Ryan needs to control the tempo and time. They need to be able to move the chains and keep their offense on the football field to keep it away from Northwest. And on the other side, Northwest Missouri State, they want to squeeze that triple option. They don't want to let the perimeter plays, the big plays off the edge, beat them. So watch them to try to slow down this offense from outside in. Late decision, and it's a keeper by Jones and nothing to show for. Matt Longacre, Division II Defensive Player of the Year with his first stop of the day. That's the first time we got to a chance, an opportunity to see at the point of attack, Matt Longacre, he's going to be able to string out Jones on that triple option, and that may be the rust that you see in the triple option today with Jones at quarterback and Josh Justice on the sidelines. Guys like Longacre and Arnold and Yost and Hummel, they're going to be able to penetrate and put pressure on the decision making. To the perimeter for the first time. Jones fires a bullet incomplete. It would have been short of the sticks anyway. Greg Baker, the intended receiver. Northwest Missouri State, second in the nation in sacks, brought pressure on Jones. Tom Quint mentioned the the size and the speed defensively, especially for Northwest up front. That may be a, a tough chore for the Bears offensively to win that battle at the line of scrimmage. Austin Barker is punting against the win, and that will be an issue today for both sides. They nearly got it. Fair catch asked for, and it's taken just outside the 40 by Bryce Young after a 32-yard punt from the freshman Barker. MIAA Offensive Player of the Year, Trevor Adams, a quarterback for Northwest. Tom, he can flat sling it. Adams does a nice job of locating the football with great anticipation and timing in the pass offense. He sees the entire field. He's not afraid to go over the top. 27 touchdowns on the season, but more importantly, he will protect the football. First play is a handoff to Billy Creason, the only remaining player from the 2009 National Championship team. And he rips off four yards. Adams is a senior from Odessa, Texas, out of legendary Permian High School. He carries a 394 GPA in biology and psychology. He's a finalist for the Campbell Trophy, the academic Heisman. Again, Creason, and he has room. A first down for the Bears. And Meyer Nolan finally brings him down. A gain of 23 for Billy Creason in Northwest Missouri State. Well, Smith and Carlson and Chevalier up front, they create a crease for Creason, and it's north and south. You can see the tough running off the left side, 23 yards, and that's the chunk yardage that the Bears have to limit defensively. They stick with the ground game. 
Creason tripped up, still manages three. Let's take a look at how Northwestern Missouri State and Lenore Ryan plan for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Tom, offensively for the Bearcats, they want to be steady and add a spark. The steadiness comes from their quarterback protecting the football and being able to be efficient in the air. But you see Billy Creason, those are the sparks that are needed. Defensively, you cannot allow 23-yard chunk plays on the ground because you know the Bearcats are going to strike you through the air. To throw for the first time down the middle, incomplete. Aiming for Bryce Young, the junior from Chillicothe, Missouri, coverage by O'Neal Blake. Good throw by Trevor Adams, but a better play by the cornerback, O'Neal Blake. That was timed perfectly. He goes up and meets the football at its highest point. That's 11 breakups on the season for the junior. Trevor Adams completes 74% of his passes on this season and his best in the country. He's got Creason in the flat and he won Hobson. It's a big stop for Lenore Ryan's defense as it will bring up fourth down. Nice push by that front three and the backers coming from the outside. That was a good win on third down. That battle at the line of scrimmage, something that you must keep an eye on if you're Lenore and Ryan. You have to be able to affect the timing of Trevor Adams in this pass offense. They are with the win, but will elect not to bring their kicker out. Matisse and their kicker has a long of 42. Offense will stay on the field on fourth and seven. Complete and a first down and more coming. This is Reuben Thomas still on his feet. Touchdown, Bearcats, a 29-yard catch and run for Reuben Thomas. Limit the explosive plays. That's what Lenore Ryan needed to do, and they don't do it here on fourth down. Just an excellent route on the outside by Reuben Thomas. He's going to go out, then circle back in. He gains leverage and a nice timely throw by Trevor Adams right on the money. Throw and catch for 29 adds up to six points. They needed fewer than two minutes. Here's Matisse in the kicker on. He remains perfect on the season. 31 of 31 and extra points. They went for it on fourth and seven. They ended up with seven points. Bearcats score on their first possession. The NCAA Division II Football Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA and in part by Macy's. Northwest Missouri State wasted no time. First possession resulted in a score on Trevor Adams' 28th touchdown pass of the season, the ninth to Reuben Thomas. 7-0 lead for the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State over Lenore Rhine. They need, didn't need much time at all to get it in. Six plays, 59 yards, and a minute 53 off the clock. Two big plays, including... The touchdown coming on a fourth and seven. Nice run by Billy Creason to keep this offense going. And then the aggressiveness on fourth down of this Bearcats offense going to their passing attack to the two playmakers, Trevor Adams at quarterback and Reuben Thomas on the outside. Second kickoff for Ben Truen. He's from Bettendorf, Iowa. And his first of the day was his ninth touchback of the season. Gerard Spears waits to return. He took one back against Davidson for 98 yards. We're less than four minutes in, and the Bears already looking for a spark. Out to the 21. Another look at the opening score for the Bearcats. Tom, defensively, you're going to see the width of these safeties. All they're going to do is go outside, and that's going to allow inside leverage going in and then back out it was a terrific time route by Adams and Thomas watch him go outside and then inside but outside safeties are almost by the numbers that allows too much run after catch opportunity and Reuben Thomas knows what to do with the football 
when he has green field in front of him. Lenore Ryan went three and out first time. Pitch to the outside. Here's Gerard Spears. And Spears is wrestled down by Travis Manning. Let's check in with Quinn. Tom, two defensive abnormalities you'll see as Rich Wright. Wide safeties. They basically split the field. You see the safeties out by the numbers and then a deep middle linebacker. Coach Wright telling me he wants the safeties to play everything from the outside in, maintain leverage, and he wants the middle linebacker, DJ Nader, to be able to flow over the top. Nader has a team best 99 tackles on the season. Tavarius Jones lost his footing. And the triple option not going anywhere for Lenore Ryan as we meet our impact players. Well, for the Bears offensively, it's Isaiah Whitaker. This is a guy that needs to get going for this offense. And up front, Joe Ray, he was out last week with a calf injury. He's back in at right tackle, and that's going to be a challenge against Matt Longacre. He was the National Defensive Player of the Year. Joe Ray's a first-team All-American. That's a matchup you're going to want to watch at that point of attack in this triple option. Jones, late pitch, put it on the ground. And it's covered up by Michael Patrick, the transfer from the Naval Academy. Tom, you can see that the timing and the spacing is just off with Tavares Jones coming off the bench. He hasn't played in multiple weeks. And that ankle injury to the, the starter over the last three weeks, Josh Justice, is really affecting the timing and the pace and the tempo of this triple option. So Lenore Ryan to punt it away. Jones started one game last year for this season. This is Zach Newman into the wind, trying to get a roll out of it, and it will trickle out of bounds at the 41-yard line. A 37-yard punt that time from Newman, second punter they've used. Will they use another quarterback today? We'll see because Northwest Missouri State is turning up the pressure on Tavarius Jones and Lenore Ryan. Capital One Bowl Week kicks off today with a full slate of games. It starts at 2 on the ESPN when the Cougars meet the Rams in the Gildad New Mexican Bowl. At 3.30 on ABC, the Bulldogs take on the Trojans in the Royal Purple Las Vegas Bowl. Then at 5.30, it's back to ESPN for the famous Idaho Potato Bowl between Buffalo and San Diego State. And at 9, Tulane faces Louisiana Lafayette in the r &L Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ABC. First ever NCAA championship appearance for Lenore Ryan, but three appearances in the NAIA national title game back in the 50s and 60s. They won one NAIA national title. Meanwhile, the folks from Maryville, Missouri, know their way around the shoals. They've been here time and again. New quarterback is Brady Bowles, and he scampers his way for a gain of five. Brought down by Meyer Nolan, and here's the two-headed look that we're seeing at quarterback for the Bearcats. Bowles comes in. It's a predetermined thing on offense. You're going to see Charlie Floor, the offensive coordinator, bring him in and out of this football game. But he provides that spark, that mobile quarterback, when you just don't know when he's going to tuck the football. But he also has the ability to sling it downfield. Bowles to throw, two-man route. That is complete for a first down to Corey Jackson. Pardon me, it's Adams back at quarterback as they flipped him there. Timing and efficiency is what this offense does in the passing game. That's just a nice skinny post, and that ball is right on target and on time in front of O'Neal Blake, the corner. So Trevor Adams back at quarterback for Northwest. Give to Jackson. Bottled up for a moment. And he squirts his way to the 25. Brought down by Tyler Botts. Let's meet the impact players now. We've already seen a major impact by both of these guys offensively. Billy Creason, he had the 23-yard run. And then Reuben Thomas gets in the end zone for the touchdown. Defensively, Tanner Botts, he leads all tacklers at 126. He's going to have to make some big plays in the middle of that defense. And Michael Green came in, comes into this game with eight interceptions. They don't want to allow big plays over the top or run after catch opportunities. Creason back in at tailback behind Trevor Adams. Play action. Adams, a wobbler complete to the perimeter. Down to the 15 goes Clint Utter. 
back to action after missing last week's game against Grand Valley State. We mentioned Tanner Botts defensively. He was able to create some pressure in the pocket, but Trevor Adams had the presence of mind to find his receiver on the outside, Clint Utter. There's Botts in the middle. He's a guy that's going to have to affect the running game and try to get into those windows in the passing game. Creason brought down by a fistful of jersey by Blake Baker. Baker led the South Atlantic Conference with 12 and a half sacks this year, first team all conference performer. Terrific job by Baker getting penetration and then reaching that big right paw out and snagging Billy Creason for the tackle for loss. That's just winning at the point of attack. Maybe a little undersized, but speed made up for that tackle for loss. Brady Bowles back at quarterback. Sophomore from Lincoln, Nebraska. His brother Blake won a national title with Northwest Missouri State in 1990. Quarterback draw. Bowles takes a shot at the 12 from O'Neill Blake. Design quarterback draw by the 6-3 sophomore, Brady Bowles. On the ground, we've mentioned 11 touchdowns and over 500 yards rushing. That's what he's going to do, especially in the red zone. I think that's where his effectiveness comes in, running the football with his body type going up against a smaller defense. Replaced by Adams. Long pass through the hands of Jason Josetis. They've converted one fourth and seven already today. And they keep the offense on the field. Now they bring the kicker out. But keep in mind, Trevor Adams will serve as the holder here. Simon Matisson. Redshirt freshman from Denmark. From 28. Got it, and Northwest Missouri State has scored on each of its first two possessions. A touchdown and a field goal. Eight plays, 48 yards. Bearcats increase their lead. That's what's on the line today. A Division II National Championship for Northwest Missouri State or Lenore Ryan. 6.27 to go in the first quarter. And Lenore Ryan playing without... Josh Justice, he was the Cinderella story at quarterback. Little used during the season. Led them to three wins in the playoffs to get them here, but sidelined with an ankle injury thus far today. And he's waited a long time for this opportunity. So I, I saw Josh talking to the trainers on the sidelines, and you could feel the body language. Hey, how you feeling? Are you are you 85? And, and you kind of nod. He said, oh, are you 95? <laughs> you know, you're trying to get closer to 100. You, you live for moments like this in championship games and the way he's played over the last three weeks has really impacted the way this offense has been effective on the ground. This is Gerard Spears. And he is taken down at the 20 yard line. Let's take you to the studio now with Max Bredos and Todd McShay. Thank you, Tom. A lot of action going on on the ESPN networks right now on ESPN. Freshman Andrew Wiggins and Kansas taking on Georgetown in a close game on ESPNU. Freshman Julius Randle in Kentucky losing to Belmont. You may recall Belmont already beat North Carolina this year. They're up on the Wildcats. And of course, we're in our D2 national title in Florence, Alabama. Back to Tom, John, and Quinn. All right, thanks, Max. It's still Tavarius Jones at quarterback. His fifth start of the season for Lenore Ryan, her third consecutive South Atlantic Conference title this season. Gets to the perimeter. A late pitch again. This one is on the ground and covered by Northwest Missouri State. Brian Hummel comes up with the loose ball. Timing issues continue for the Bears of Lenore Ryan. And Tom, it's not only timing, it's spacing. And that's what happens when you're not comfortable running the offense week in and week out and you've been out of the lineup, you see spacing is a problem. There's nobody there. You have to make that decision right now. If you're going to get the ball out, make that decision now. But leverage is in favor of the Bearcats defensively. That's just a nice job of staying outside in, which we talked about. Richard Wright wanted to do that defensive coordinator 
and that's where Brian Hummel made a big play. Lenore Ryan leads the country in rushing 378 a game. Thus far, they've been held to negative four through three possessions. Brady Bowles took a hard hit last time on the field, but he's back at QB for the Bearcats and will take it himself. Trying to work his way through the defense, Chris Christian and Stephen Amwa there to bring him down. Northwest Missouri State average started the 44 yard line averaging better than eight yards of play and already three chunk plays. This is the biggest set of downs defensively for Lenore Ryan right now. They have to limit the point production out of this set of downs. Open door QB continues. It's Adams back to throw complete. To the five goes Reuben Thomas and a first down for Northwest Missouri State. You get the feeling that this game is quickly spiraling out of control for Lenore Ryan. It's getting away because of the how multiple offensively the Bearcats can be. And I know that head coach Mike Houston, he's trying anything he can defensively to keep them off the board, keep seven points off the board. But right now this machine of Northwest Missouri State offensively. If you tee them up with this field position, usually they're going to come up with six. They're top 40 in the nation in both rushing and passing. Creason, touchdown, Bearcats. He goes airborne for the second score of the day. Creason just explodes from the five yard line. Watch him elevate and get into the end zone. He takes off from about the two yard line and will not be denied. The Teeson's extra point is good. And Northwest Missouri State has jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead. A touchdown pass from Adams, a touchdown run, and a leap for Creason. Great surge by that offensive line. You've got guys coming around and Jake Scarborough and CJ Keeney on that right side doing an excellent job of providing a huge lane to run through and Billy Creason decided he was going to leap through it for six points. Three plays 15 yards after the fumble recovery. The inability of Lenore Ryan's offense to pick up a first down has put Northwest Missouri State in tremendous field position all morning. We're not even to noon yet here in the Shoals. Where will Lenore Ryan find its spark? Tom, they may need it here on special teams, starting with field position. Spears driven into the end zone. No chance for a return. Northwest Missouri State has made eight national championship game appearances, the most all time. Last time under head coach Mel Churchman, 2009 here in Florence, Alabama. And they were able to rip off another national title. Blake Bowles was the quarterback that day, and he helped the Bearcats and Coach T to their third national title. Adam Doral played at Northwest Missouri State. He was an offensive lineman for Mel Churchma. They went through a winless season as a freshman. They went on to build success. It was nearly unmatched at the Division II level. Doral is a Maryville guy, born and bred, was a spoof hound at Maryville High School before playing collegiately for his hometown school. Option pitch. Good grab and a big game for the first time. Graham Duncan forced out of bounds by Brandon Dixon. It's the first time Lenore Ryan has moved the chain. And it was the first time Tavares Jones has been decisive in the triple option. Watch the fake inside and the ball comes out right now. There's space. It still wasn't on the money, but at least the decision making process was much quicker from the quarterback position. Duncan averages nine yards a carry.
Miscommunication on the mesh. It's still two yards for Chris Robinson, the fullback. Back to the sidelines. Let's check in with Quinn. Tom, one area Lenore Ryan has been struggling is the, the uh, center guard gaps. They've tightened their splits. They told us coming in they're going to be about three and a half feet, three feet. Uh, and that last play was short yardage. They tighten it up. And now, now you'll see them actually widening out again. But they've been struggling as Northwest Missouri State sending two defensive tackles in, in that guard center gap to try to take away three blockers. Lenore Ryan has a great center, Parker Murray. Did not have one single bad snap in the mud in the muck last week against Westchester. To the pitch again. Room on the edge for Gerard Spears. And he's inside the 30. Lenore Ryan aiming to become the most prolific rushing team in NCAA history today. Now that's more like it. That's more of what you've seen all season long from the Bears offense. The quick decisions. If you're going to gap control on the inside, well, you've got to get it to the edge. And Gerard Spears knows how to pick him up and put him down on the outside. And with that run, Lenore Ryan is now the all-time leader in NCAA history in rushing yards, surpassing a Pittsburgh State team that was loaded with guys like Jermaine Race and Neil Philpott. Two Harlan Hill finalists. Lenore Ryan has done it with a collection of guys, not only at running back, but also at quarterback playing three this year. They've done it with multiple quarterbacks and at least five guys over 300 and 350 yards. So they do it with multiple playmakers in this triple option. Brian Hummel got a little anxious. And the tenor of this game changing on this drive. Sides with contact. Defense number 42. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's David Siegel, our officials today from the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. <laughs> to throw. Man coverage incomplete out of bounds as Grayson Wells was tightly covered by Brandon Dixon. Lenore Ryan now has their place in the history books. An Oklahoma team in 1971 led by offensive coordinator Barry Switzer. And Lenore Ryan, the Division II level, level 5,336. In Georgia Southern, they've been doing it for years. So the Lenore Ryan in great company with those three other schools. More importantly right now, Tom, third and short, can they convert, can they continue to get it on the ground in this triple option? Keeper for Jones. And a first down for Lenore Ryan, Eric Reimer, junior from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, with the stop. And that's the play that backup quarterback today Josh Justice has been able to really make effective over the last three weeks it's the quarterback follow you have your own lead blocker in the fullback so you have an extra man going downhill in between the tackles Robinson this time straight ahead and a power run to pick up a few He's a junior from Noonan, Georgia. Are we seeing Lenore Ryan's timing seemingly decision making. in the rhythm? I think it's the decision making from the quarterback Jones that has been better on this drive. It's been sudden and that and that's getting the ball on the perimeter with good blocking by the wide receivers on the outside. To Spears on the outside. He has a first down and wrestled out of bounds by Bryce Enyard. You want to be able to loosen up your opponent in this triple option, and you get so many bodies inside the hashes that when you make a good decision in getting the football out with quickness to guys with speed like Gerard Spears, you're going to gain leverage. You win on the edge in the triple option. 
Spears, a first team all conference performer for Lenore Ryan. First and goal. Straight ahead. Touchdown, Lenore Ryan. Chris Robinson takes it in. Fourth touchdown of the season for Robinson. But he comes up gimpy. Robinson holding that right shoulder down. He gets a pop right in the hole by DJ Nader. Physical linebacker for Northwest. He's going to stay down on the ground. That shoulder looks like the left side really bothering him. Mike Houston, the head coach, first man over to check on him before the athletic training staff can make it there with 1.16 to go in the first quarter. Lenore Ryan is on the board, but this would be a big loss. Robinson came into this game with 56 carries on the season and a very balanced and effective rushing attack, as we mentioned. All time record holder for a rushing offense without a 1,000 yard rusher. He took a shot by DJ Nader. It was downhill. And that's what this team needed to do. They needed to answer. And you're hopeful, hopeful that Chris Robinson is going to be able to come back in this football game. First touchdown of the game for Lenore Ryan comes from Chris Robinson, the junior from Noonan, Georgia. On the left side of your screen, dragging that left arm. It was immediate. He was able to get into the end zone, but immediately was holding that left side. And hopefully, for his sake, They'll be able to come back into this football game. Zach Newman on to attempt the extra point. Lenore Ryan's rushing offense was non existent. Its first three possessions, minus four yards. That drive, 70 yards on the ground for the Bears. Robinson paid it off. I think it was better decision making on that drive by Tavarius Jones, the quarterback, getting the football to the outside and letting guys like Gerard Spears and Chris Robinson benefit from the ball getting on the edge. That will open up lanes in between the hashes. So the first three possessions went nowhere. All of a sudden, Lenore Ryan found a rhythm. Decisiveness at the quarterback position, getting the football outside. That's been the key on that successful drive, getting it to Duncan on the outside, getting it to Spears on the outside. You have multiple players that can beat you with speed and vision, and that opens up the inside running lanes against a bigger, stronger front seven from Northwest. Is it possible the coaching staff simplified the decision making? for Tavarius Jones going into that position. It's quite possible they did that, Tom, but I just think that Jones started playing the position instead of guessing, and I, and I think that ha happens when you're out two or three or four weeks. No squib kick from Justin Powell. Northwest Missouri State will have good field position again. Out to the 39-yard line by Brian Hummel. Capital One Bowl Week continues Monday on ESPN when Tyler Tettleton leads the Bobcats against Shane Carden and the Pirates. The Beefo Brady's Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Week. East Carolina versus Ohio. Monday at 2 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. That Tyler Tettleton is I the like guy him. you like watching play. I like Tyler. Got to see him grow up a little bit uh, in, in his early teens. And his mom and dad uh, raised a good one at quarterback. Speaking of quarterback, Trevor Adams is back behind center for the Bearcats. On play action, he's looking deep, has a man. Through the hands of Reuben Thomas, who got behind the last defender, Michael Green. And that's a missed six opportunity when Michael Green goes underneath this pass. Maybe a little bit more air on the football, but that's right on the money. 
I mean, you have to make that catch if you're Reuben Thomas. Just keep running, and you're going to run right underneath that rainbow for six points. Phil Jackson gets turned around and gets taken down after a gain of one. Rodney Singleton, O'Neal Blake both in on the stop. Tom, maybe a little momentum change going on here with that Lenore Ryan offensive score starting to feed over to the defense. I know that Northwest missed a golden opportunity on first down, but if they can force a three and out here, that'll mean a lot to get back into this football game. Knocked away. Fantastic coverage by Chris Christian. In a punting situation for Northwest Missouri State. There's that momentum coming on the side of the Bears. If you're Bryce Young, you got to come back to the football. Keep attacking the football and make that distance close between quarterback and receiver. But Chris Christian never gave up. Fought through the would-be catch and now a three and out for the Bears defense. First team All-American Michael Green waits to return this punt. A line drive back to the six. First man, second man pass. Gets a key block. This is Green, but a flag on the play, and he steps out at the 36-yard line. Gliak Crew has been quiet thus far through the first quarter. 54-yard punt, 28-yard return if it stands. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 47. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So that will cost Lenore Ryan some yardage. Looked like the holds right there. Good call by the official officiating crew, but now the Bears offense, which would have had pretty decent field position, is backed up inside their own 20. Almost a 20 yard difference in field position as the first quarter nears its end. Pitch to Spears, and he dances out of bounds to stop the clock with nine and a half left. Cody Matthewson with the stop for Northwest Missouri State. You need positive yards on first down when you're running this triple option to keep the pressure on the Bearcats defense and, and keep this momentum on the side of Jones and company right now. First quarter is in the books from Florence, Alabama with Northwest Missouri State leading Lenore Ryan 17 to 7. Flyby came early since then it's pretty much been all on the ground. Two touchdowns for Northwest Missouri State and Lenore Ryan finally with an answer. You're watching the NCAA Division II Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Quinn Kesnick and John Kajemi. I'm Tom Hart from Florence, Alabama. And it's a 17-7 lead for Northwest Missouri State. It's the most first quarter points in this title game since 1983 when North Dakota State did it. Second and nine for Lenore Ryan. And all of a sudden, these kids from Hickory have figured out the offense. Ball came out after Tavarius Jones was down. First two possessions were three and out. And then a fumble turned it over. And then they got going for a 70-yard drive, and now this. And Tom, they're winning on the edge. Look at the box. There's almost 10 bodies in between maybe a four or five-yard distance. So Tavarius Jones needs to get outside and get that football outside the hashes, closer to the numbers. That's where they've had success running the football. 
If you're wondering, instant replay is in effect for the semis in the national title game at the Division II level. Gain of two for Jones that time. Kevin Arnold with the stop. Bearcats 17 points in the first quarter. Most prolific first quarter since North Dakota State in 83. 10 of their 19 plays came on the ground. 15 of 17 came on the ground for Lenore Ryan. They only averaged seven passes a game, so that's no surprise. Pitch to get to the outside to Spears. He gets a block, and he just missed getting the sideline for a huge game. D.J. Nader, Quint said he's playing deeper today, was able to track him down. Lucky for that. He's playing seven, eight yards off the line of scrimmage. Quint talked about that earlier in the game, and he's going to scrape along the outside, and thank goodness he does for this Bearcat defense because Gerard Spears was going to take that to the house. They've had great success on the outside, and Nader there is going to play off the line of scrimmage so he can scrape around those blockers and get to ball carriers like Spears. Lenore well, Ryan going unbalanced to the left side now. Their first team All America tackle is now lined up at the tight end on the left side. That's Joe Ray, number 71. They run the keeper that direction. And behind that All-American, pull out a gain of nine before Bryce Inyard can bring down Tavarius Jones. Tom Jones is a big body at 6'2", 200 pounds. Sometimes he'll run around you, but if he has to run over you, he will. That's where the success has been on the perimeter, on the outside, but most of the time to the right side. Six rushing attempts for 61 yards. And Joe Ray up front. He's going to make it happen, the first team All-American at tackle. They're going unbalanced to the right side this time, but come back to the weak side to pick up the first down by Tavarius Jones. So Lenore Ryan is flipping their tackles. Joe Ray will go unbalanced to the left, or Zach Bunn will go unbalanced to the right to get some more heft on that side of the line. And trying to gain leverage, they're trying to seal the edge in the running game. That's where they've had success on the outside, especially to the right side, and that's primarily where Joe Ray lines up at the end of the line of scrimmage. They line up with two wide receivers this time. Stick with the ground game, a hurdle for a few for Isaiah Whitaker. Tom, we mentioned during the break that watching last week Lenore Ryan's offense, most of the time it was the fullback that was gaining all the yards against Westchester. They were gashing them in between the tackles. Today, it's more of the outside, which may open up that inside give, that first option on this triple option. Whitaker had 90 yards and two touchdowns in deplorable conditions in Hickory, North Carolina last week. Temperatures in the mid-30s, rain and mud. A hole opened up out of nowhere for Tavarius Jones, and that'll set up third and short for this Lenore Ryan offense which leads the nation in rushing. They have converted 48 percent of their third downs on the season for head coach Mike Houston who followed retired coach Fred Goldsmith and they may be in two down territory here with the win at their back. They may be thinking of two plays here. Well they've been magnificent on fourth down all year as well. Slow developing pitch to Whitaker and the ball's loose again. Covered up by Lenore Ryan. It was Zach Bunn, the all-conference tackle who was following the play and able to fall on. That looked like slow motion at the snap. That looked like more of the same the way they started this football game. You don't want to put the football on the ground. You're running the triple option. That was a good pitch. The wind may have affected that football, moving it from the body closer to the line of scrimmage. It almost just dropped out of the air. Lenore Ryan, third in the nation in fourth down conversions this season at 71%. This is fourth and two. Straight ahead. No dice. Isaiah Whitaker is stood up by a host of Bearcat defenders led by Eric Reimer and Reimer carried him another 15 yards the other way. Reimer and Kevin Arnold said no way not in the inside. Big defensive stand for Northwest Missouri State. They win that battle at the line of scrimmage. There's a five or six white jerseys. 
carrying back Isaiah Whitaker. There was just no running room there. Surprised that Lenore Ryan didn't try the edge as successful as they have been on the outside. Brady Bowles at quarterback. A little misdirection on the keeper. What makes Brady Bowles so effective is that he's also a very efficient passer. He's completed 75% of his passes over the last five games. Those are great numbers for a running quarterback. He's been terrific all year in the role that he's played. He's thrown the ball efficiently, seven touchdowns. He protects it, only two interceptions. And as you mentioned, Tom, a high percentage, not only over the last couple of weeks, but throughout the season. When he entered against Grand Valley, he picked up a first down with his legs the first time he touched it. He stopped here to bring up third and short. Then he completed his first two passes, and he ended up running for a touchdown the first time he was in the game. It made you question who was in at quarterback. Was it 15 or was it 10 the way he threw the football last week? Trevor Adams got the start. And he will see action shortly, we assume. It's a design plan on when Bulls will enter, but it's also based on feel if they see that they have an advantage earlier than the design series. And he is taken down for a sack on third and short. Blake Baker in on his 14th sack of the season. Lenore Ryan, the nation's best in quarterback pressures, comes up with a huge stop. Baker just wins at the point of attack. This is a great job of just coming through here. He's just going to win right off the snap of the football. Chevalier never gets his position outside, and the speed of Blake Baker just wins at the line of scrimmage. So after turning it over on downs, Lenore Ryan with a key stop. Line drive kick covers and carries over Green. A 49-yard punt. Pressure from the edge paid off for Lenore Ryan. And the triple option offense will be on the field when we return. The NCAA Division II Football Championship is brought to you by Warner Brothers Pictures Grudge Match in theaters Christmas Day and Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Great crowd on hand from Hickory, North Carolina, and the folks from Maryville, Missouri as well. Merry Christmas from the Shoals of Alabama, where Northwest Missouri State leads Lenore Ryan 17-7. South Atlantic Conference looking for its first ever Division II National Championship. Carson Newman has been here a couple of times. In fact, lost back-to-back -back title games against Northwest Missouri State. One in four overtime. And now it's Lenore Ryan, three-time South Atlantic Conference champions. They're in the maroon, Northwest Missouri State out of the MIAA in the white and green. Surprise starter quarterback is Tavarius Jones. And he's working with Zach Howell, a new center at this point. Jones stood up in the backfield and dropped. Jared Fox in to make the stop on Jones. Well, you mentioned Jones early in this football game was very confused about the timing and the space in this offense. He wasn't very decisive when he went out to the edge, but as the game went on, he got better. His timing got better, his rhythm got better, the spacing got better in the offense, and they were able to put points on the scoreboard and use that big frame in the running game. It's decision-making that really slowed this team down throughout most of the first quarter, but now it's starting to get better, although the field position has not. Play clock rolling. No gain on second and 11, and a developing story for the Bears of Lenore Ryan. Their starting center, Parker Murray, has left the game, and as you can see, is on crutches on the sideline. Senior from 96, South Carolina, had a tremendous game last week in the mud against Westchester and he's replaced by a senior from Burnsville North Carolina Zach Howell 
the glue of that offense usually is your center. When you lose a guy like Parker Murray up front, Zach Howell has a big challenge in front of him to hold down and communicate to that offensive line. Third and long. Movement up front on Lenore Ryan. Ball start. Offense, number 18. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's Victor Brand in the wide receiver. Division II National Championship game for the 28th and final season from Florence, Alabama. Pitts Lenore Ryan out of the South Atlantic Conference against undefeated Northwest Missouri State making their eighth appearance in the national title game. Quint Kesnick, John Kajemi, I'm Tom Hart. And Lenore Ryan, which stuttered and stopped and otherwise ground to a halt. Their first three possessions got it going the last two, but now facing third and 16. Pressure coming. And just outside of the end zone, they bring him down for a sack. That was a foot away from being a safety. Bryant Hummel able to get penetration. And with the first string center watching. Yeah, helpless feeling on the sidelines. When you go back to pass, you can't do anything about it. And Bryant Hummel just wins immediately. And Jones really did a good job of getting back into the field of play. That could have easily been two points for Northwest. Drayton Queen is the Lenore Ryan long snapper. It's a short look now to his punter, Austin Barker, who will be kicking with the wind. And it's blocked out of the back of the end zone. Penetration for Northwest Missouri State. Kevin Berg, the freshman from Kansas City Rockhurst High School, turns in a safety with the punt block. Never count out special teams, especially when you have a short field to work with. Kevin Berg comes immediately off the right side and blocks this football. Just a great job of getting around that wall. Normally you have about 14 yards. There you have about 10 yards to get it off with one step. And Kevin Berg does an excellent job of getting on the board. Well, the West had a big block field goal in the semis, a block punt to give them two here today, 19 to seven, Bearcats. It's a lonely feeling for punter Austin Barker punting from his own end zone with pressure in his face. It turns into a block punt and a Northwest Missouri State safety thanks to Kevin Berg. Kevin Berg does an excellent job of just coming in really untouched, but he's going to come around all three of these personal protectors that are all looking at one man coming from the middle. Watch Berg get to the outside, but all three personal protectors are involved blocking one person. You have to be able to fan out and identify they don't catch number 23, Kevin Berg, coming from the left side. And he ends up getting in for the block. So credit Zach Maloli for bringing that pressure to open up for Berg. Now free kick for Lenore Ryan. And once again, Northwest Missouri State is going to have tremendous field position. Justin Powell will kick it off for the Bears. Robert Burton the third is set to return. Standing at his 15. What a great kick. And Burton has it go over his head and out of the back of the end zone. If special teams are a key, then credit Justin Powell for that long kickoff that turns into a touchback. Well, that's huge because it seems like Northwest Missouri State has had excellent field position this entire first half, and now they're going to start backed up on their own 25-yard line. So that free kick carries 70, pardon me, 80 yards. Trevor Adams at quarterback for Northwest Missouri State. He's thrown for 70 yards thus far today. 
Looking to add to that total. Out of the backfield, it's creasing. And has to fight to get back to the line of scrimmage past Stephen Amwa. ESPN's NCAA championship coverage continues tonight with the women's volleyball championship. Number 12, Wisconsin, will meet number two, Penn State, for the national championship at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Adams complete right at the marker to Clint Utter and they will mark him forward progress past the chain for a Bearcats first down O'Neill Blake with the tackle really like the way this Northwest Missouri State offense puts pressure in all phases they can beat you from the pocket with Trevor Adams now they bring in Brady Bowles who can beat you with his legs and if you fall asleep he'll take a shot down the field over the top as well. Bowles is back at quarterback. He rides Creason before handing it off. A gain of nearly eight for Northwest Missouri State. Let's go back down to Quint. Tom head coach Adam Doral calling the plays now off his play sheet. Very much involved. You know, in that last kickoff, he had Burton at the 20. He said, no, back up to the 15. During the timeout, he's coaching the old line. It's a contrast to the BCS level where there's about 10 full-time coaches. Division two, there's only six full-time coaches. They got a ton of GAs over here, about a dozen GAs. But these head coaches do it all. And also working with limited scholarships, the division two limit is 36. And that varies by conferences. South Atlantic. Caps theirs at 25. No gain, maybe one for Crease in that time. Amwa with another tackle. And it really puts an emphasis uh, not only the character of players that you get, but the talent in trying to develop these guys. You have to be really careful on, on your talent evaluation and trying to get guys in the program that can change a program, that can be dynamic at certain athletic positions on defense, on, on offense, and on special teams. And to Quint's point, I know coach really enjoys coaching that offensive line. He said that I'm, I like being with one of those those big guys up front. Yeah, he was an offensive lineman, but he's frustrated with the chain gang. They had fourth down on the far side marker. And as he's sending in the play call, he's doing it for a fourth down play. And now they have to burn a timeout. The chain gang on the far side corrected it to third. And that certainly had a major effect on the play call facing fourth and one versus third and one. Absolutely. Going against the wind, you want to have the right personnel in. You want to get your maybe your running quarterback and Brady Bowles in the football game. That just happened at the NFL level. It happens at D2, third and one, when we return. Welcome back to the Shoals here in Alabama. Merry Christmas as Northwest Missouri State leads Lenore Ryan. 19 to 7 from Raleigh Stadium in Florence, Alabama. Northwest had to burn a timeout when the chain gang had a four showing instead of a three, much to the chagrin of head coach Adam Doral, MIAA coach of the year. Trevor Adams under center. They usually run shotgun. Third and one. Adams keeps. And there's the whistle. They'll mark this one right on our unofficial yellow line. Cole Chevalier is the Northwest Missouri State Center. They are running behind. First team, All-America Cody Carlson at left guard. By the way, the official spots the football. It could be a, a link either way here, Tom. Got it by half a pigskin. And so with 3.36 to go in the first half, Northwest Missouri State able to keep this drive alive behind Chevalier and the rest of that O-line. Offenses usually like to take a shot. After you get a first down, you come out and you measure, and it's real close. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a little play action here and maybe take a, a chance down the field here. Here is the play action. And they go underneath the, for the completion of Marcus Wright. And Wright carries it 
for a first down and a gain of 17. First time we've seen tight end Marcus Wright. He does a great job of just using the play action and coming from the backside. Just a well-designed play by Charlie Floor, the offensive coordinator. Marcus Wright does a little bit of everything. He'll play fullback, he'll play tight end, but he's good in space with the ball in his hands. On the jet sweep, this is Reuben Thomas. He's got the sideline, and he dances out of bounds after another. Northwest Missouri State first down. We've seen it today. Reuben Thomas has another gear. When he has that football underneath his left arm, he can get to the outside in a hurry. Good job of setting up his blocks in another play by Marcus Wright. This time without the football, he's out in front blocking for Reuben Thomas. Adams gets a breather. Brady Bowles returns at quarterback. They like to run the quarterback out of an empty backfield set with Bowles. He wants to throw. And he has to scramble to return to the line of scrimmage. Landre Sparrow there for the stop. They were trying to get that little pump fake to the quick screen and try to beat the Bears over the top. But that was a good play by O'Neal Blake, the corner, staying deep as the deepest to the short side of the field. Did a nice job of denying Brady Bowles at quarterback. Adams replaces Bowles at QB. Complete to Thomas. To the five. And he sets up a first and goal. And it says something that this Bearcat offense is able to be so efficient by rotating quarterbacks nearly every play. They're so used to doing this, and, and they're... They're so fluid in their pass offense. In and out of the break, the ball's on time, and then you get an athlete in space, and that's what they've done throughout this season to stay undefeated, and they're doing it again in the championship game. Lob to the end zone incomplete. Reuben Thomas, the nearest receiver, second and goal. It's Northwest Missouri State team, which has been in the top five of the Division II rankings all season long. They came into the playoffs as a number one seed. They had a tough game against a big squad from Grand Valley State in the semis, but got them at home. And they're able to fight through some first half turnovers to knock off the Lakers. They've won all but two of their games by double digits this season, and in the playoffs, three wins by 25 points or more. Second timeout used by the Bearcats to set up a second and goal, leading 19 to 7. Max Bredos here in our college football studios. I will be joined by Todd McShay. We're less than an hour from kicking off bowl season. We'll give you the players to watch. Todd has his top, his first mock draft. We'll give him his top five picks from April's draft as it stands right now. Freshmen are in focus in college hoops. Andrew Wiggins, Julius Randle in action. We'll let you know how they're faring. Right now, let's get you back out to Florence. We'll see you at the half. All right, Max, thanks. Yeah, Belmont looking for another upset today. They already knocked off North Carolina. They're having a great game against Kentucky. This would be similar. Lenore Ride came into this game as decided underdogs. They have, and they, they didn't start the way they wanted to. They didn't start fast on offense, and now they, the chore is trying to keep this explosive offense of Northwest Missouri State out of the end zone before halftime. Last time they went to Creason in this situation, he's behind Adams. Here he is. And he gets touched in the backfield and taken down for a loss. Tanner Botts, third team All-American for Lenore Ryan. Came in with 126 tackles in 14 games. Yeah, he goes sideline to sideline for this Bears defense. And that time getting in the backfield, very instinctive at the linebacker position. From the Bearcats here, I go to the slot receiver to the short side of the field. That's Ruben Thomas. Pump fake, and now Adams wants to run, and he takes a pop at the three from Botts again. 
And that sets up fourth and goal. Northwest Missouri State has one timeout remaining if they choose to use it. Big decision here. Do you take the points? I, I might want to run that clock down and just kick the field goal here before halftime. That certainly seems what Adam Doral is deciding on. His place kicker, Simon Matisse, is perfect on a season. And so they'll wait for this play clock to get down to two before using the timeout. It'll be the final of the half for Northwest Missouri State. And fewer than three seconds remain in the half. He played early in this game. They kept Matisse on the bench to go for it on fourth and seven instead of trying a long field goal. That fourth and seven ended up being a touchdown pass from Adams to Thomas from 29 yards out. And the Bearcats got on a roll early. They've had nice balance in the offense, and I think that's what makes them so difficult to defend. No matter who they're playing, where they're playing, it seems like they have a nice balance between Trevor Adams and Brady Bowles at the quarterback position, but a nice job in the running game. Don't forget Trevor Adams has been serving as the holder, so the starting quarterback will count him up, make sure everybody's accounted for, and Matisse comes on for this field goal attempt. It'll be a 20-yard attempt. Matisse, 8 for 8 on the season. And they're going to try to ice him as Lenore Ryan uses its first timeout. First of the half. This is the 32nd timeout. Tough to ice a Dane. It would have been easier <laughs> last week in Hickory when temperatures were in the mid-30s playing on that mud-soaked field. That's absolutely right. Tonight, the last team standing meet at Key Arena to determine the best team in the nation. Will perennial powerhouse Penn State take home another title, or will the Wisconsin Badgers complete their unprecedented run with a championship? The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship game tonight at 9.30 on ESPN2, also live on Watch ESPN. That was fun to watch the other night, watching Wisconsin take down number one, Texas. This is Matisse. Oh, they almost got it, and he bangs it through. Off the post. And the freshman from Denmark hits his second field goal of the game. Northwest Missouri State will likely start with the ball in the second half, leading 22-7. to seven. Never a sure thing. Looked like a clean hold. The ball just started left. Karam's off that left upright in for three points, but that's not the way you draw it up. But they'll take those points into halftime any way that Northwest Missouri State can get them. 22 to 7 is the lead. Let's go down to Quint standing by with Adam Doral. Coach, what was the single key development in that first half? Well, I, I thought our kids did a really good job executing for the most part. I thought our defense played really, really well. You know, that stuff's hard to prepare for on a yeah, short week. And so we did a pretty good job of defending it. But, uh, you know, we got to finish in the red zone. That's uh, really hurting us right now. Defensively, perimeter runs seem to be the only area that they've been able to gas you. What, what needs to change? Well, we're going to change it up. we got to keep mixing up. But we got to keep getting on their side of the line of scrimmage and playing over there. Uh, but for the most part, I thought we did a pretty good job. We've seen them pitch the ball more in this game than we have the last four weeks. So we, we I think we're doing something right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. It's a second option team that Northwest Missouri State has faced this season. They gave up to seven to Missouri Southern earlier this year. It's a lead for the Bearcats at the half of 22 to 7 here in Florence. Now back to the studio, Max Bredos and Todd McShay. You're watching the NCAA Division II Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Welcome back to Florence, Alabama, where Lenore Ryan trails Northwest Missouri State 22-7 alongside 
John Congemi, I'm Tom Hart. It was a 17 to nothing start for Northwest Missouri State, and that's the biggest difference in this game. Well, Tom, the lack of execution by Lenore Ryan, when they started on offense, they were three and out, three and out, and just added to field position, which led to points. And I like the balance of Northwest Missouri State, their offense. They're able to run it, they're able to throw it on the edge, and they have athletes with space. And that, that's dangerous when you're, when you're facing in a championship game stops and turnovers and in field position if you can get athletes with the football in space you're on track to a championship win with west missouri state looking for its fourth national title they're in the white and green trim and the boys from hickory north carolina lenore ryan in the cardinal and black looking for their first ever ncaa title they won an naia national championship Back in 1960. Justin Powell had to get the ball set after the wind blew it off. And kicking with the wind. They're going to try and bring this one out five yards deep. It's Robert Burton. Burton with a beautiful cutback. And it gets upended at the 25-yard line by O'Neill Blake. With West Missouri State in the first half, wasted no time getting their offense going. Did a nice job of rhythm in the pass offense. Here, Reuben Thomas takes a pitch and catch 29 yards into the end zone. They can run it, too, with Billy Creason. He goes in from four yards out. They were scoring in bunches early in this football game. But what I liked was the consistency in the pass offense from Trevor Adams to guys like Corey Jackson on that skinny post. The ball comes out efficiently and on time. Trevor Adams at quarterback. Goes back to Creason on the throwback. And Creason's got the sideline and blocking downfield. Pass midfield. Still going. And a stiff arm will carry him all the way down to the 32-yard line. A 43-yard start to the second half for the Bearcats. Tom, what we talked about, getting athletes in space. And that's exactly what offensive coordinator Charlie Floor does to open up the second half. He's able to go full flow away to the wide side of the field and run that throwback screen to Billy Creason for 43 yards. Adams gets it to the edge to Thomas. He's got blocking in front. He gets taken down in the open field by Meyer Nolan, senior from Atlanta who transferred in from Eastern Kentucky University. Tom, this Bears defense, they need a turnover. They need a stop. They need to slow down this efficient Northwest Missouri Bearcat offense. They're spreading them out, and that's, that's exactly what they want to do, getting their athletes in space. It's now Phil Jackson at tailback, and he gets surrounded at the line of scrimmage. Another stop for Tanner Box. Alongside Landre Sparrow. Third down now, you have to affect the pocket. You have to disrupt the timing of quarterback Trevor Adams in this pass offense. Incomplete, nearly picked off the hands of Chris Christian, who's had a strong game defensively for the Bears of Lenore Ryan. And the Bearcats may go for it here on fourth down going into the wind. They may decide to keep this offense on the football field. The sun is finally shining here in the shoals, but the wind has been an issue and rain is on its way. The only question is if it will arrive before the end of the game. Northwest Missouri State's lone fourth down conversion ended up in a touchdown. Incomplete. Coverage by O'Neal Blake on Clint Utter. Blake had a pick last week against Westchester in the semis. Well, that's what head coach Mike Houston wanted to see. A defensive stop after two huge plays offensively by Northwest Missouri State, getting it outside with Creason and getting it on the edge with Reuben Thomas. They come up with a nice defensive stand and get their football team and their offense with decent field position. 
Remember Lenore Ryan is without their starting center Parker Murray. Zach Hal has taken over for him. Pitch to the wide side. Duncan. Able to fight his way for a big gain at first down. Let's check in with Quint Kessinick. Uncharacteristic breakdowns in execution, and it starts with the quarterback, especially early in the ball game, according to head coach Mike Houston. Said they started operating a little more proficient in that in that second quarter. It's just about making the right reads. He also mentioned how they've changed up their blocking schemes on the perimeter and how they've had success in that regard. But overall, says we just got to start playing like ourselves. We're making too many uh, uncharacteristic mistakes. Thanks, Quint. They lead the nation in rushing, 378 a game. Second time, Brian Hummel has jumped. But so far today, offsides with contact, defense number 42. The five yard penalty will result in a first down. So far today, Lenore Ryan with only 106 yards on the ground, nothing through the air. And the uh, passing part is no surprise, but they've been much more proficient with the ground game all season. Quarterback keeps it. Jones up to the 46. We'll bring up third and a couple. Travis Manning with the tackle from Belleville, Illinois. The edges have been kind to this offense after the first quarter. Seems like the Bears offense in this triple option have been able to be efficient outside the hashes. That's where they've been gaining most of their yards. By mistake, second and two after the penalty. 121 yards on the ground now, averaging Nearly 378 per game. I believe they had over 300 last week in the first half alone. And 451 yards total against Westchester, and that was on a muddy track. Movement early on the left side. Ball start. Offense, number 75. Five yard penalty. Second down. And against a bigger team earlier in the playoffs, North Alabama, Lenore Ryan was able to rush for 366 yards and six touchdowns. So they've done it against bigger, stronger defenses already this season here in the postseason. And remember, Tom, they're doing it with two players that didn't even play with regularity last week. Zach Howell's in at center, replacing Parker Murray, and Tavarius Jones in at quarterback. This is a pitch to Spears. And Spears brought down a yard shy of the marker by Travis Manning. Reminder there, Josh Justice was the starting quarterback through the playoffs for Lenore Ryan. He was a bit of a Cinderella story playing really only in the postseason and brought them to this title game. But Justice turned his ankle on practice in, on Thursday and has yet to see a snap today to various Jones. Had shared time at quarterback early the season, and he himself left the Carson Newman game with an injury. On the pitch, perimeter first down again for Gerard Spears. Cody Mathewson with the stop. Spears lost his helmet. He'll need to come out for a play. And I'm not so sure. Brian Dixon and Brandon Dixon, the two prolific corners for Northwest Missouri State on defense, they're great in pass coverage. But setting the edge against this run is something that they're not particularly volunteering to do. They're a great cover guys. So I think that's why they're having success on the outside. They want to be able to close it from outside in and you're not getting that edge pressure that you need from the corners. Tyshawn Aline has replaced Brandon Dixon at one of the cornerback spots. Miscommunication on the snap and no gain. Matt Longacre. Defensive player of the year with the stop. Capital One Bowl Week kicks off today with a full slate of games at 2 o'clock on ESPN. The Cougars meet the Rams in the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. At 3.30, it's ABC for the Bulldogs and Trojans in the Royal Purple Las Vegas Bowl. Then at 5.30, back to ESPN for the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, Buffalo and San Diego State. And we close it up at 9 o'clock. Two hometown teams, Tulane versus Louisiana Lafayette. Great crowd will be in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. And ABC.
Looking to find the edge with Graham Duncan. And he runs into his own man at the 40-yard line. It's a Lor Ryan offensive line, which is kind of inverted from what you think about when you consider where the size is. They ask their tackles to run a lot, and those guys are getting downfield. Zach Bunn and Joe Ray, those two guys respectively, have to be athletic on the edge. Ray's the first team All-American, had a muscle strain last week, a calf injury. He's starting again in this championship game. And on the other side, Zach Bunn doing a terrific job. He's a first team All-Conference guy, a three-year starter. So they have to get it done here on third down. Spears brought down right at the marker. We'll see the spot. Travis Manning with another stop from his strong safety position. First down, Lenore Ryan. Well, this is just the kind of drive they wanted to start the half. It is. They have to stay on the football field with their offense. And if you ever really drew up a pass play, for this team right now, this would be the time to call it. I think you're going sideline to sideline. It may be time maybe to dial up one of those passes. Wells is their best receiver. Ball's on the ground again. And it's still loose. Covered by Northwest Missouri State. Their second takeaway of the day. Brian Hummel comes up with it. Hummel comes up with the big play, but it's been the mistakes of Lenore Ryan in this triple option, getting the ball outside. That ball never gets to the proper area. A long pitch. Looked like the wind may have knocked that thing right down. And a huge play for this Bearcats defense. Brian Hummel getting on that fumble recovery. It's a second recovery of the day for Hummel. Perfect conditions include in, as you consider the precipitation that's been non-existent for most of this game versus last week where the conditions were deplorable and they just kind of stuck with the inside game. How much effect can the wind have on a pitch? I, I think it can have a, a big effect on the pitch, but I just still think it's the spacing in this offense. That pitch, you're asking your quarterback to pitch that over 8 yards, 10 yards out to the edge, and I just don't think that... The reps have been taken over the last couple of weeks to get the spacing with Jones in for justice. This is Creason. And he busts into the Lenore Ryan secondary for a first down before Singleton brings him down. Take one more look at this pitch. Watch the ball. It seemed like the ball's out in front, but it gets knocked down. It's almost knuckling because of that wind away from the would-be ball carrier on the outside in Graham Duncan. You'd almost rather have a true pitch instead of a toss. Right, because that ball's going end to end. Pump fake, deep ball, end zone, touchdown! Ruben Thomas has his second of the day! Good teams take advantage of mistakes and turnovers. Championship teams take advantage of those opportunities and here you have a strike right down the middle of the field Trevor Adams a 30 yard bullet to his favorite target on the outside Reuben Thomas he had one for 29 this one a little bit easier for 30 Thomas did not have a 100 yard receiving game during the regular season he's had two in the playoffs he's on the verge of his third 92 yard receiving Two touchdowns from Trevor Adams to Reuben Thomas. And it's the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State leading 29 to 7. The NCAA Division II Football Championship is brought to you by Subway. Hurry to Subway for Customer Appreciation Month this December. Subway, eat fresh. Northwest Missouri State out of Maryville, Missouri, looking for its fourth Division II National Championship. And a step closer now that they have a 22-point lead. Well, it doesn't get much easier for quarterback Trevor Adams. He's going to find Thomas, and it's just a simple post pattern, but you have to watch the safety here. 
There's no reason to turn your eyes this way. There's no threat outside of you. So all you need to do is backpedal and not get turned around. He takes himself, Michael Green does, completely out of the play and opens up a huge void for Trevor Adams to step up and find number 12, Reuben Thomas, for the second touchdown of the afternoon. His new Adidas jerseys look nice for Northwest Missouri State. Brought him out special just for this game with family on the nameplate. Short kick into the wind from the 15 at Spears. Into the pile at the 26 yard line. Now to Max Bredos in the studio for an in game update. Thank you, Tom. The, rate, the curtain's being raised on the college bowl season, New, Mex Me New Mexico Bowl, the Gilded New Mexico Bowl, Washington State, Colorado State, because basketball going long on ESPN. That game will now begin on ESPN News and move to ESPN at the conclusion of Georgetown and Kansas. Right now, back out to Tom Hart, John Kajemi, Quinn Kessinich in Florence. All right, Max, thanks. Lenore Ryan has played just one quarterback today. It's been Tavarius Jones, sophomore from Washington, Georgia. The unexpected starter after an injury to Josh Justice. And he wants to throw it. Tipped up from behind with good quarterback pressure from Matt Minert. And it doesn't look like Jones is completely 100% as well. It looked like he was really laboring to get outside to throw on the run there on first down. Josh Justice on the sidelines. Tom, you had mentioned multiple times he's been the catalyst through this playoff run, but there's definitely a problem with the sophomore quarterback. So if Justice can't go and Jones has to leave, who would be next? And now Josh Justice begins to get loose. Quick pitch on the option, and that goes for a first down to Gerard Spears. Let's check in once again with Quinn. Tom, these teams can dress 55 players for a playoff game, and they, there's six alternates. So about a half hour before the game, I went up to Lenore Ryan head coach, Mike Houston. I said, Coach, you know, are there any changes to, to your roster, to your 55? He goes, well, we've got a significant change. And right now, Josh Justice is back on the field as Jones hobbles off. He says Justice got hurt on Thursday, twisted his left ankle in practice. Uh, he goes, you'll see right away we're going to start Jones. He has been an incredible spark to this offense, Josh Justice. He came in to lead him from behind against Carson Newman. And a quick handoff on the sweep to Gerard Spears. Coming into this title game as Jones gets helped off, Josh Justice had only played in eight career games. So how does a guy go from the bench and little playing time to leading this team to the title game in a tricky offense that demands multiple repetitions? Well. At South Point High School in Belmont, North Carolina, Josh Justice ran for 2,000 yards as an option quarterback. He's a quick learner. He knows the system. And now the senior getting his chance here in the title game for the first time. And he's he got will throw. Man wide open. And it is bobbled. Caught. Hold in by Grayson Wells. Wells will go the distance. There's something about tip passes in this state of Alabama. Grayson Wells takes it for 59. Nothing new for Josh Justice, the quarterback, the senior. You mentioned his play against Carson Newman a few weeks ago. He came in four for four in the passing game. This time he goes 59 yards on top to Grayson Wells. That's their first pass completion since three weeks ago. They've run 119 plays from scrimmage since they last completed a pass. They didn't even attempt a pass last week. Extra point is good from Zach Newman. There is new life for Lenore Ryan. Justice served here in the third quarter. On a second play from scrimmage, Josh Justice goes deep to Grayson Wells. His concentration pays off 59 yards later, 29-14. Josh Justice off the bench and immediately leads Lenore Ryan to a touchdown, making it a two-possession game here in Florence. Well, Grayson Wells, Tom, does such an excellent job. It's just a go-route on the outside, but 
Enyard, the corner, is going to blitz from there. But the key is the safety, Travis Manning. He has to get from the field all the way back to the short side of the field to cover for the short side blitz. Josh Justice does an excellent job right here. He knows he has his wide receiver, but watch Grayson Wells close on the football. He's going to attack the football because it's going to bring him closer to contact, but he shortens the distance. All good wide receivers want to attack the football, make that distance between quarterback and the catch that much shorter. He did that. He made himself huge over the middle, and it turned into a big play. No return for Reuben Thomas. A couple of weeks go down on the plains at Auburn. Gus Malzahn's Tigers turned in a very similar play for a win against Georgia. Well, it seems like the, the Bears have a little bit more confidence on their sideline right now. See if it filters over to the defense again. They've already made one nice defensive stand in this second half. And I know Mike Houston, who's the head coach and runs this defense, he's hoping for another one. Creason taken down after a gain of five by Rodney Singleton. Creason's a senior from Grain Valley, Missouri. A lone holdover from the 2009 national title team for Northwest Missouri State. They switch quarterbacks again. It's back to Brady Bowles, whose brother was the starting quarterback and an All-American in 2009. Here comes the blitz. Bowles keeps it and picks up two. This defense starting to play a little faster with a little bit more aggression at the point of attack. That has to happen if they're going to make up this deficit in the second half. The one thing they haven't done is turn the football over. They need to create a turnover to flip the field. They've had awful field position for most of this game. Complete for a first down flag on the play. Josetis with another catch covered by Blake. Great Lakes crew working this national title game. Eligible receiver downfield offense number 16 was covered up five yard penalty repeat third down may not be a takeaway but a mistake for Northwest Missouri State certainly keeps momentum on that Lenore Ryan side what's well, going to make it's definitely covered up here on the outside but it's going to make the conversion on third down that much tougher for the Bearcats offensively, putting more pressure on that passing game. This offensive line has been solid the entire afternoon. Can they keep Trevor Adams clean here on third down? Adams pressured, dropped by Blake Baker. Second sack of the game for Baker. Blake Baker is a finalist for the Gene Upshaw Award, the top lineman in Division II. Upshaw played at Texas A&I Kingsville. That's playing with your chin over your toes. That's aggressive. That time the Bears only brought two, but they brought a very important one from the short side, and that was Blake Barker for his second sack. Kyle Goodburn to punt. Into the win. And down at the 50 for some reason. Could have let it go, but Brandon Dixon instead stopped it. It'll be the best field position for Lenore Ryan. Still playing with the win for the last 347 and playing with emotion on defense. Another big one for Baker. 15 point game.
It's a final season for the Division II National Championship here in Florence, Alabama. Been home to it for 28 years. Next year, going to Kansas City. The home school, North Alabama, won three in a row in the mid 90s. Grand Valley State won four titles in five years with head coach Brian Kelly and later Chuck Martin. In Northwest Missouri State, in a thriller, quadruple overtime over Carson Newman of the South Atlantic Conference. Touchdown, a two point conversion with 10 seconds left. Northwest Missouri State was the, they were the Buffalo Bills of Division II for a long time. They lost four in a row from 05 to 08. Broke through for their third national title in 09. But after 28 season here, brought here and kept here by the likes of Grady Lyles, Danny Killen, Harlan Hill, Division II Player of the Year trophy is named after the former Chicago Bear. Off to Kansas City in Sporting Park next season. A fitting send off if Lenore Ryan can keep this one close. Chris Robinson with the carry. How important is it for Lenore Ryan playing with the wind this third quarter to get a score here? Extremely important. Right now, 29 14. They've got the ball on the plus side of the 50 yard line, so it's important to get points. Not only points, Tom, I think a touchdown. You get a touchdown here, you make it a one possession game. Josh Justice with his second series of the day, and his pitch to Graham Duncan will result in a first down. Duncan inside the 40. 312 remaining here in Florence. Back to the studio, Max Bredos. I can hear the happy holiday puns all the way from the shoals. A flag down and a false start will go against Lenore Ryan. False start, offense, number 75, five yard penalty, first down. That's their all conference left tackle, Zach Bund. Now you just have to go back and, and not let that beat you in this drive. You give up five yards on a, on a false start. You have to get it back in bunches, but it's going to take three downs to do it here in this offense. So just get what you can on first down now. Get back the yardage you lost on that penalty right here. The Norrhein offense which comes into this game averaging better than six yards a carry. First man lost the football. It's down again. Lenore Ryan has given up twice today. At that time, it's covered up by Chris Robinson. Physical game in the middle, in between the tackles. That's a nice job of coming off the backside and dislodging the football. Luckily for the Bears, though, Chris Robinson bounces right back on it. Justice with the pitch. Outstanding tackle in the open field by DJ Nader. A loss of two for Graham Duncan. Nader patrolling that middle of the defense. Look how deep this middle linebacker is. He's just going to scrape to the outside and get the option. But it's the depth away from the line of scrimmage. There's no linemen that, that are able to get through and get an angle on him. So credit the guys, the big guys up front, for helping out DJ Nader have a clean alley to make that open field tackle. Kept by Justice, nowhere to go. Matt Longanker, the Division II Player of the Year with the stop and that will force a fourth down situation. The Bears offense has, have had the most success on the outside going to the right side. They're going to keep this football on the ground. Look for them to get it to the outside edge to one of their playmakers. And if they do decide to throw on fourth and nine, how tough is it to throw with the wind behind you? It's not. It, right now, it's pretty good. They've been accurate going this way. They've only attempted one pass, and it's been going in that direction. So you feel like Justice has the confidence. Justice, option, and he pitches it to Spears. 
And Spears is submarined on the edge by Bryce Inyard. Big stop for Northwest Missouri State. It's what that Bearcat defense needed. They gave up some field position, but they were able to get on and get off the football field. Without the real threat of throwing the football, it's very difficult when you get in third and long and fourth and long for this offense. Trevor Adams flanked by Billy Creason. Creason patient. And they're happy to get the win back in the fourth quarter. O'Neill Blake with the stop for the Bears. You almost get the feeling, Tom, that Northwest has been able to weather a little bit of a storm here in the third quarter with the emergence of some explosive plays out of Josh Justice coming in for an injured. Tavarius Jones at quarterback. We head to the fourth quarter from the Shoals, where Northwest Missouri State is looking for its fourth national title. 29 to 14 through three. Bearcats ahead of the Bears. Jimmy on top heart. We go to the fourth quarter in Florence, Alabama. Division two title on the line. Lenore Ryan against Northwest Missouri State. 29 to 14 lead. 17 points in the first quarter for the Bearcats. The most in the championship game since 1983. They scored 17 unanswered before Lenore Ryan finally got on the board. Added a safety and a block punt in the second. Adams after the pump fake steps free, lets it go incomplete so the first chance they get to throw with the win they want to air I, it out I love it I love the play call there by offensive coordinator Charlie floor he wasn't going to waste any time that was a good job in the pocket by Trevor Adams of stepping up buying himself some time and letting it fly down the field and, and his head coach Adam Durrell saying you know what we had a chance we had him again behind coverage just missed him Northwest has rotated quarterbacks throughout the game by design. Incomplete. Rodney Singleton on the coverage. Really have to credit this defense of Lenore Ryan. They've been flying around doing a nice job of covering up some of these athletes in space on the outside. You've got Guys like Reuben Thomas and Billy Creason in the backfield, they've done a nice job of limiting their touches in the last couple of series. Kyle Goodburn to punt it away. With the wind. Green from the 14. Only a few on the return. Special teams coverage by Brandon Dixon after a 48 yard punt. Lenore Ryan back on offense. The NCAA Division II Football Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. Fourth quarter from Florence, Alabama. Happy holidays. Northwest Missouri State leads Lenore Ryan 29 to 14. He plays in this one. Well, injuries, including Tavarius Jones, who was a surprise starter quarterback, came up hobbling after this play. He was replaced by Josh Justice, second play from scrimmage. He just picked up right where he left off. The darling of the postseason, Justice with his second touchdown pass of the year. And Justice still a quarterback, loaded backfield for this option attack. And he's got Spears, and Spears has a first down 
It was a battle to be the starting quarterback in the offseason for Lenore Ryan between Tavarius Jones and Miles Freeman. Freeman got the nod, but on November 2nd against Carson Newman, he suffered a muscle tear in his lower leg. So that turned the ball over to Tavarius Jones. Well, a few weeks later, and once again against Carson Newman, Jones suffered a neck injury in the third quarter, and he was replaced then by Justice. Justice keyed the comeback against Kent Sparks' Eagles of Carson Newman, a conference foe, and led him to this title game. Northwest wanted a hold, and they are adamant about it. Losing their headset man. <laughs> it looked like Zach Bunn got away from, got away with one, the left tackle for the Bears offensively. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine, but he did. He got away with one right there. Tug on the back of the jersey. Just at the corner there and allowed a, a two-yard gain. Justice keeps it. And this is what we saw a lot last week in the mud against Westchester. Josh Justice doing it himself when ball control was so key and vital in the weather. A lot of quarterback follow. You can do that against teams where you have the upper hand on the interior line of scrimmage. But today, with the size and speed that the Bearcats possess defensively, it seems like Lenore Ryan has had their best efforts going on the edge, especially outside to the right. They've been able to gain that edge and gain the perimeter with the option, with the triple option. Sprint out to throw. Justice changes his mind. Nothing doing, a loss of one. In that game in the semis, Justice ran for 175, three touchdowns, and three two-point conversions. But now they will punt it away on fourth down, trailing by two scores, including a two-point conversion needed and punting into the win. Zach Newman is now on to punt. They rotated he and Barker. Newman better against the win with this rugby style, and that one is off the side of his foot. That one not good, Tom. The lead is 15 for Northwest Missouri State. Field position, once again, a benefit to the Bearcats. And the winner of the 2013 Harlan Hill Trophy as Division II College Football Player of the Year is Franklin Quiete, Bloomsburg University. Uh, special thanks to Teresa Blosky and the trio support services for keeping me on the field academically. You know, uh, I didn't start off really well in my academic career in Bloomsburg, and she whipped me into shape. She gave me, a, she, we set goals, and we met those goals each and every semester. And uh, I'd like to thank her for that, for keeping me on the field, because student athlete with nothing on student, you can't play football if you can't get the grades. And she definitely told me that and sent that message to me, and I was able to, you know, be, be successful in the classroom and on the field. So thank you. Harlem Hill Trophy, the Division II equivalent of the Heisman Trophy. Dustin Vaughn and Kevin Rogers were the other two finalists. It's named after an Alabama native, Harlan Hill, who played his college football right here at North Alabama before going on to the Chicago Bears, where he was the NFL Rookie of the Year in 1954. Mr. Hill passed away this past March. Brady Lyles, also a key figure in bringing the Division II title game here and keeping it here, also recently passed away. And now the 28th and final year of the title game being here in Florence. We'll move to Kansas City next year. Ruben Thomas with the carry. Brought down by Singleton. I would think the mindset for the Northwest offense right now is to get points, go down and really close this game out. Go down and dominate in this set of downs and get a touchdown here. Adams in the air. Wide open. Caught! Inside the five by Clint Utter. Fantastic hands as he beat his man, Blake. 37-yard strike and a ball that looked like it was overthrown. It's a great example of for a wide receiver to run and not run with your arms stretched out. Wait till the last minute and go up and catch the football. Another well-timed and well-positioned throw, but terrific concentration on the catch by Clint Utter.
kept by Bowles, and he is in. Brady Bowles with his 12th rushing touchdown of the season. Older brother Blake won a national title here in 09. And by the way, there's a younger brother, Brooke, coming up the pipeline out of North Star High School in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's the way you take advantage of instant field position set up by your defense. You get a big play from Adams to Utter, and then Bowles takes it in from four yards out. So Northwest Missouri State with 11.36 to go in the fourth quarter. With a three touchdown lead on Lenore Ryan. It started on the completion to Utter that covered 37 yards, and then Bowles called his own number for the score. Miles on the Northwest Missouri State sideline. It's a 36 to 14 lead. Head coach Adam Doral addressed his team before the game, gazed at his crystal ball, and he saw the Reese's perfect play before it ever happened. Believe in special teams today. Believe what's going to happen. We're going to block a kick today, right? Yes, sir. And well, we're going to score a touchdown on special teams today. And that they did. Maybe not a touchdown, but they got the safety on the block punt. Devin Bird comes in and gets the block. They get the safety. They get points. And there's still 11.36 left to go to get that special teams touchdown. But that was a big moment in this football game. That bear claw on the back of the helmet, SB, for Scott Boswick, their longtime defensive coordinator, who was named head coach in 2011 after Mel Churchma retired. Boswick tragically passed away while mowing his lawn in June of that year. And Doral, who was to be his coordinator, was tabbed as the next head coach. They remember Boswick today and throughout the season. In fact, after their semifinal victory last week, they carried the goalposts from the stadium right past the Boswick home. They tear down the goalposts in Maryville. Half of it goes into the pond. The other half heads to the pub. I think I know which half I'd rather be with. Yeah, I'm going to be on the ladder, I believe. They're well on their way today, Tom. They're taking the momentum of 14 straight victories and doing a nice job on in all three facets. They, they've moved the football efficiently on offense, through, through the air and on the ground. This defense has been really good at the point of attack, especially in the first quarter, and then they get the block on special teams. Lenore Ryan's going to have to find some offense in a hurry and do it against the prevailing wind. Maybe one for justice. El Churchman was a head coach at Northwest Missouri State for 17 seasons. He led him to seven national title game appearances, three national championships, and after a year down in Texas after his retirement, he returned as the director of athletics. He certainly knows his way around Florence. This is a big run for Michael Patrick inside the 40. Kevin Arnold finally brings him down. Tom, that's a staple of the triple option, that fullback in between the tackles for 19 yards. A great job of second and third effort by the sophomore running back, Michael Patrick. They had a lot of that last week, not enough of it today. Another first down carry for Patrick. One major goal accomplished by Lenore Ryan today. They became the new record holder, not only the Division II, but the all-division NCAA record for most rushing yards in a season, surpassing MIAA member Pitt State from 2004. Better than Oklahoma in 1971. Give to the fullback. Trying to shove that pile, and they do so for a gain of one. Six players have at least 400 yards rushing. 
Injured starting quarterback Miles Freeman was the closest to 1,000 with 968 before his injury in the first game of November. 5,511 for this triple option attack for Lenore Ryan. And you can go up and down this roster. You have multiple players adding to that record. Good pitch, good blocking on the edge. And diving is Duncan. Should have been enough for the first down, but they'll spot him short. I thought they cost him a yard on that spot. It'll be third and one instead of a first. Well, look for Michael Patrick. He's been the guy on that first read of the triple option going straight ahead. He's had some success here late in the fourth quarter. That offensive line can win that line of scrimmage battle. To the edge again, first down, few more. Open field stopped by Travis Manning. Been really impressed with Spears and, and Duncan and Whitaker and Patrick. The way they can get outside and the good blocking by these wide receivers. You're not going to get many pass opportunities. And that's a nice open field tackle by Manning, Tom, as you mentioned. But the wide receivers play an integral role in the success of the running game. They have to block nine times out of ten. Now they're going to throw it. Wide open. Caught. Touchdown, Lenore Ryan. Grayson Wells from Karan, Boston. Beautiful call and beautiful setup by offensive coordinator Brent Thompson. They've been going outside on that option and having success. This time, Boston's going to stop, look, and just chuck it downfield to a wide open Grayson Wells. 34 yards on the touchdown. So to make it a two-score game once again, after a seven-play, 80-yard drive, and when you talk about scoring within the parameters of a triple option offense, it's not just that score, but then how the defense reacts to the play that you just ran. Will that be an advantage for Lenore Ryan, and do they have enough time to take advantage of it? Boston, the senior from Durham, North Carolina, with a touchdown pass. So how's that going to affect what Northwest Missouri State does defensively against the perimeter in the future? Well, they're going to have to keep their eyes out of the backfield and, and be honest in what they're doing. This is just a well-designed play. They're going to fake that dive up the middle and watch the receiver on the outside. He's just going to slip right by the last man in defense who's got his eyes in the backfield. That's Travis Manning, who made that big hit the play before. So that was way too easy for Boston to show run, get the football, and get it out to his playmaker on the outside, Grayson Wells, for six. You know, if you're a triple option team, whether you're Georgia Tech, Navy, Air Force, Georgia Southern, no matter what, Missouri Southern, no matter what level, it seems that every play, every successful play, then has an effect on the next set of plays. It has. It's just adding a piece to the puzzle. Every play that you have in the triple option, has another effect to it, whether it's in the passing game or the running game. That time, the design was perfect and timely called by offensive coordinator Brent Thompson. Marcus Wright on the return after the squib kick. Out to the 38-yard line. Tonight, the last team standing meet a key arena to determine the best team in the nation. Will perennial powerhouse Penn State take home another title or will the Wisconsin Badgers complete their unprecedented run with a championship? The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship game tonight at 9.30 on ESPN2. Also live on Watch ESPN. That Wisconsin team pulling off some upsets on their way to the title, just as Lenore Ryan did on their way here to Florence. This is Brady Bowles. Great vision in the open field, and he picks up eight yards on first down. Most important thing now for Brady Bowles and whoever's running the football for the Bearcats is protect it. You don't want to turn the football over. You want to keep that clock moving, closing in on eight minutes left to go in this football game.
They'll call it second and one. Trevor Adams now at quarterback. Creason straight ahead, first down. Tackle from behind by Meyer Nolan after a gain of 12. Been impressed with Billy Creason today. Just his vision, that, that play was designed to go to the right side and he was able to use that vision and that toughness and that slashing style of running to get it to the backside and move the chains again. 78 yards on the ground for Creason. Back to Bowles. And here's where they can just grind you even without a lot of yardage on the ground. That clock is rolling as they're able to turn to Bowles in the run game. And Tom, what makes Adam Durrell and his offense so effective is they can beat you in multiple ways. They can beat you on the ground using quarterback runs or, or creasing in the offense, or they can get it to their playmakers on the outside with efficiency with Trevor Adams pulling the trigger. Adams flushed and dropped at midfield. Another sack for Lenore Ryan. Tanner Botts and Stephen Amwa get there. Good pressure by the, the linebacking core of Lenore Ryan. Tanner Botts, he's been all over the football field, but the leverage player on the outside was Stephen Amwa. Does a good job of staying outside in and not allowing Adams to escape. Good tandem there at the linebacker spot. Fourth sack for the Bears today. They came in leading the country in sacks. 48 through 14 games. They lost their opener this season. They come in on a 13 game win streak. On third and 15. Caught. And a fall forward for a first down by Clint Utter. Just a back breaking play for Northwest Missouri State to escape the trouble and pick up a fresh set of downs. No better word, Tom, than backbreaking. You have him third and 15. Subtle step up in the pocket by Trevor Adams. Buys himself enough time for this dig route. And a nice catch. He just settled in the zone in front of Stephen Amwa. Didn't run himself into traffic. And the throw kept him outside of the linebacker. And now Mike Houston, who's in his third year as the head coach, has to be keeping an eye on that clock. Approaching five minutes, down 15. And the running quarterback, Brady Bowles, is back on the field. Timeout, Northwest Missouri. So Northwest Missouri State will do them a favor and stop the clock with 5.01 to go from Florence. Division II National Championship on the line. Here in Florence, Alabama, and Northwest Missouri State in control looking for their fourth. It's a 36 to 21 lead. The man who won the first three is down on the sidelines with our very own Quint Kestick. Coach Churchma, 17 years at the helm. When, when did you think you officially kind of established the tradition uh, of winning at Northwest Missouri State? Well, it, it, it came pretty quick. You know, we were 0-11 in 94, and uh, 96 we were 11-1. And, and so uh, it, it, things turned around, and then to be consistent, uh, you know, it happened in 97 and then 98 and 99 national championship. From then on, the expectations were pretty high. 2009, we were here. This field it was grass back then, <laughs> but, but that was uh, your, your last championship. What's your biggest memory of, of that win in 09? Uh, the fourth down play to Soy. Uh, I mean, it was a great game, but uh, and Coach Doral called it. You know, that, that's the neat thing about it. He he said to me, it's fourth and three, and he said it was a check play, and he said, uh, if they're in the box, we're going to throw it. And I said, that's all right, and they were, and so uh, it was great. You've gotten to watch this team from, from day one. What is uh, most impressive about the, the, this uh, 2013 Northwest squad? These, this team cares about each other. They, they, they're, they're so selfless. They, they're a great team, and that's what makes it special. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Tom. All right, Quint, Brady Bowles with the keeper. 
and he scrambles his way to a first down. Coach Churchma on 183 games in 17 seasons, including, of course, three big ones. Eight times in the championship game now, seven of them under Coach Churchma, 38 playoff wins, winning percentage of 73, which is the best ever in their 10th consecutive playoff appearance. Now, this game will move closer to Maryville, Missouri next year when it goes to Kansas City, Kansas. But you can be guaranteed that Mel Churchman is going to miss coming to Florence, Alabama, especially given all the success that they've had over the years. It's a 14-hour drive or a quick flight that they are happy to make each and every December. It's a great story and the success he's had. And, you know, it breeds success and it breeds future wins and championships for their university. Chris Christian helped off the field. This is where the game will be starting next season. Sporting Park, Kansas City, Missouri, home of the MLS team there. It's actually uh, over on the other side in Kansas, but part of the Kansas City metro area. It is a gorgeous stadium with the roof that covers the fans, but leaves the field exposed. And the NCAA awarded that recently to Sporting Park and the folks in Kansas City. You know all the MIAA fans in the area will support it well. And so we're visiting fans from across the country in that centralized location. Only question now remains, will Northwest Missouri State be heading into next season as the defending national champions? Trevor Adams back at quarterback with 4.20 to go as they bleed the clock. And back to Creason. Chris Green with the stop for Lenore Ryan. That's the most important thing right now is stay in bounds for guys like Billy Creason and Trevor Adams and Brady Bowles when he gets his opportunity at quarterback. They just want that clock as their friend as they wind it down inside of four minutes. Well, the folks in the Cardinal and Black have a lot to be proud of over the course of this season and making this their first ever NCAA championship game. Under head coach Clarence Stasevich, they won the NAIA national title in 1960 over Humboldt State. That was a 15 to 14 win. And when we talked with the Lenore Ryan folks this week, we asked, how did this program get back on the map? And it was due to the dedication of the alums that played in the late 50s and 60s, including the 1962 national title game at the NAIA level. They won eight straight conference titles in the 50s and 60s and 12 out of 14 and they were a powerhouse at that level and it's not easy they came into this game looking to be just the third private school to win the d2 title it cost forty thousand dollars a year caught in the corner of the end zone by josetus and northwest missouri state well on its way the title number four That pass by Trevor Adams could not have been put in a better spot. And Jason Josetis, all he had to do was run to the back pylon and celebrate with his teammates. First, he looks to the right side. He says, you know what? I'm going to go backside and throw a dime to the back of the end zone. Just perfectly thrown over the corner, Blake or O'Neal Blake. Matisson remains perfect on the season. And this is just about as perfect to do as it can get for Northwest Missouri State. Great poise by quarterback Trevor Adams. He looks right first and then throws just a perfectly placed pass in the back of the end zone where only Josetis could go up and get the football. Just nice execution, not only on that play, but the entire day in the pass offense by Trevor Adams. You can tell why his, his accuracy of 74% leads the entire country. So the Chicago kid, Josetis, gets in on the fun. program that at one point lost four consecutive title games. Josh Justice 
Seeing if Lenore Ryan will have one last gasp. Under three minutes to go. No return for Spears. ESPN's NCAA championship coverage continues tonight with the women's volleyball championship. Number 12, Wisconsin will meet number two, Penn State, for the national championship at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. A lot to be proud of for Lenore Ryan. A lot to be proud of. 13 straight victories after losing their opener. And the way they've gone through the playoffs with Josh Justice at quarterback, and it was unfortunate that he injured that ankle, that left ankle on Thursday, preparing for this championship game because Tavarius Jones really didn't get a whole lot of reps during the playoffs in game type situations. Graham Duncan, hog tied, brought down by a horse collar tackle. It was a first down run already. And Duncan slow to get to his feet. And it's not just that Josh Justice was injured in practice. Another look at the penalty. Can't bring him down from behind with your hands in the shoulder pads. But it's also when that injury occurred, it happened so Thursday. Late. Yeah, so late in the week, Tom, that you really can't. Crystal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 29. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. I know it's plug and play when you play in the triple option that you just have to come in and, and do the job because the plays aren't going to change. But the timing and the dynamic of making those reactions at the quarterback spot when you haven't done it in a game for three or four weeks, that hurts an offense with their rhythm and their spacing. And, and it showed early in this game. 245 remaining in this one. Live coverage of the trophy presentation can be found on ESPN3 immediately following the game. Log on to ESPN3. Here's the pitch room for Boston. He's already thrown for a touchdown today. The success in this offense has been on the outside. It's been closer to the numbers today than it has been in between the hashes. And what a big departure from where they found success last week. Once again to the edge. And a helmet popping hit. Travis Manning lost his hat. As Boston went hard into him. It's a big time collision. On the outside. Now Boston only goes 5'8", 150 pounds. And he's delivering the punishing blow on the edge. A Gatorade toast with more than two minutes to go as Northwest Missouri State will ring in the holiday season with their fourth national title. Falling grab by Boston. I apologize. Powerade toast. Let's be precise. One thing that was precise was the passing game of the Bearcats offensively. They were dynamic in the passing game. Quarterbacks were able to on target and on time the entire day. Adams threw for 276 and three touchdowns. Northwest Missouri State will become just the fifth team ever to finish a season 15 and 0. And it'll be the first national championship for Adam Doral. MIAA coach of the year. He's got long ties to the university in the city of Maryville. Doral's grandpa, Ross Alexander Scott, played football on the first team on campus in 1908. His grandpa and his great uncle played on the team in the 1940s. He played high school ball for Maryville High School. Maybe the most successful spoof hound ever as he <laughs> hauls in a national championship trophy. Here's how they got it done today. They jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead. And they did it in the on the air. They, they did it through the air. Ruben Thomas did a nice job. A 29 yard touchdown run after catch spectacular. And then Billy Creason 
Creases the right side for four yards. You get the blocked punt on special teams by Kevin Bird, and then it was to the air again, a wide open receiver down the middle of the field. It was Thomas again for 30 yards. And then the quarterback, Brady Bowles, the spark that he brings when he comes into the offense. And it was a three-headed monster today for the Bearcats on offense. Adams throwing for 277. Creason running for 76 yards and a touchdown. And Thomas on the outside with a huge afternoon. Let's not forget Brady Bowles, 48 yards on the ground and a touchdown run. Coach Doral talked about the strength of this team. So did the athletic director, Mel Churchma. And specifically, Coach Doral told us it's all about these 12 seniors. They are awesome. They are unselfish. And the plan was to come to Florence, have fun. They've earned that right, well, until Friday afternoon. But we knew that one of the big advantages for the Bearcats is that they played on the big stage. They play Pittsburgh State every year at Arrowhead Stadium in front of roughly 20,000 people. They've been here to the national title game time and time again, and that certainly is an advantage. It really is. I mean, when you have a staff that's together like this for, in the continuity that you have, and, and I think Coach Doral said it himself to us during the week. As a young coach, he tried to be too perfect. He put unrealistic goals in front of himself and this team. And now they have the athletes to put it together, and you could see the perfect season culminating here today. Don't forget trophy presentation coming away live as soon as we're finished. Simply log on to ESPN3. Justice to throw again, and that one is jarred loose. Flag on the play, multiple flags on the play. Karan Boston was the intended receiver. Looked like it was Jared Fox breaking up the, the pass attempt, but he's going to get flagged in the secondary. Little play action at the line of scrimmage. Boston's going to get behind the linebackers, but it was Fox that brought in that shoulder, that left shoulder, to try to make the, the breakup on the pass attempt. We started the season talking about the targeting foul, and we will finish it talking about the targeting foul. There is instant replay in effect for the final three games of the season at the Division II level. It's really meaningless at this point as far as this season is concerned. Jared Fox is a junior from St. Joe Central. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 14, a hit above the shoulders. Half the distance from the previous spot, an automatic first down. By rule, number 14 is disqualified from the game. The previous play is under further review. And so I suppose that would carry over throughout the entire offseason and he missed the first half of the opener next year. Well, Jared Fox comes over, and I'm not so sure. And there's head to head, there's helmet to helmet contact there. So that's going to go upstairs. Initially, it looked like he led with his shoulder, but from the end zone shot, you can tell that the helmets do touch first before the shoulder. And once the call is made on the field, the only thing the replay booth is looking for is contact above the shoulders. There's no question that it happened on a defenseless receiver, so it shouldn't take long. No. After further review, the ruling of targeting is confirmed. By rule, number 14 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. So, next September against Nebraska Kearney, Jared Fox will sit out the first, first half. half. Yeah. I think he'll have plenty of time to. He'll have plenty of time to celebrate with his teammates on the sidelines, but for the next minute 26 and for the next 30 of next season he'll be on the sideline well now here's where it's odd that Fox has to leave the field of play yeah and that rule has been in effect anytime a player is ejected they'll walk him back to the locker room then in a minute 26 he's going to have to hustle back out to be part of the trophy That's presentation right. that will be live on ESPN 3.
And so Fox makes his way off the field. One twenty six to go. First and ten for Lenore Ryan. Justice to throw again. Searching for a receiver, and that is caught at the one yard line, and that will be a first down. Karan Boston with a heck of a catch in the middle of the field. Final game for Boston, the senior from Durham, North Carolina. Justice has nine rushing touchdowns on the season. Make it 10. A one yard plunge for Justice. Really good story, Tom, of having Josh Justice come back in this football game and throw a touchdown now, getting in on the ground with a minute four left because he deserved better than an injury on Thursday leading up to the championship game where he wasn't able to start for this football team. Josh Justice didn't play the first eight games of the regular season. Appeared in the postseason against Carson Newman in place of an injured Tavares Jones. Led them here to the national championship game. And without a twisted ankle on Thursday, you maybe you're looking know. at a different outcome for Lenore Ryan. Newman punches it through. 15 point lead for Northwest Missouri State. Lenore Ryan has rushed for 273 today. It's only the seventh opponent to clear the 100 yard rushing mark against this Northwest defense. You have to give credit. To Josh Justice coming in off the bench. And Tavarius Jones did what he could, but when you're out of this triple option for as many weeks and you're not really practicing at 100%, it's very difficult for a guy like Jones, who's a sophomore, to come in and really spark this offense the way it had been running so efficiently in the playoffs up to this point. So it's really unfair for the sophomore. He tried to do what he could, and he got better as the game went on, but you could just tell that they were missing something some spacing issues turnovers really fell into play and that's where Josh may have been able to help the start of this football game trailing by two scores onside kick certainly possible here for Lenore Ryan which direction will he go he gets a do over timeout used by Northwest Missouri timeout. State Northwest Missouri their third and final timeout of the half. That's the worst situation for Zach Newman. You didn't get the hop you wanted. No, it's Tee it back up. That's right. Second man's always better. That's oh. Every time. And you get a little bit of a feel for how you want to kick the football the next time and maybe go in a different direction. The final game here in Florence, Alabama, at Brawley Stadium to decide a Division II national title. And what a fantastic job these folks have done as hosts over three decades. Credit to the late Grady Lyles, Harlan Hill, Danny Killen, and all of the local leaders here in the Shoals for making it happen. Covered up, up front. By Northwest Jason Josetis. And Northwest Missouri State a minute away from its fourth national championship. The 
the power raid ready on the sidelines. The offensive output, 419 total yards. They did it in all three phases, Tom, today. This is what championship teams do. They go undefeated and they close here today. The Division II National Championship has been decided via playoff since 1973. And this is the fourth for Northwest Missouri State and the first for head coach Adam Doran. Green and white has never looked better. The Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State become just the fifth team in history to put together a 15-0 season. And for the fourth time in school history, the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats our national champions. <laughs> They'll leave Florence, Alabama with another trophy to head back to Maryville, Missouri for the fourth time in school history and a fitting send off here in Florence for a powerhouse program, Northwest Missouri State. Disappointment on the other side, Tom, but you have to you have to just tip your hat to the execution. Northwest Missouri State on offense, on defense, on special teams. They did such an excellent job of protecting the football and taking the field position they had offensively and turning it into points today. Let's go down to the field where Quint Kesnick is standing by with the winners. Quite a scene. Coach, congratulations. Why do you think you're able to get off to such a strong start? Well, just we've had great senior leadership all year and 12 kids that uh, have really driven our football team since January the 15th. I'm just very proud of those kids. What made the difference defensively? Well, I thought we did a really good job of making some adjustments against a really tough option offense, and I thought we did a really good job of tackling for the most part today. How do you best describe now being able to hold that gold trophy? Well, I just, uh, it really hadn't sunk in yet. I'm so proud of our kids, our university, and our community. And uh, it's pretty neat when you can uh, lead your alma mater to a national championship. And uh, it's a great feeling. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Tom. Quinn, he was a three-time captain on the offensive line as a player. He was part of a winless team in 1994. And then keyed the turnaround with head coach Mel Churchman, now the director of athletics, and a 15-0 season of perfection for Northwest Missouri State. The fourth trophy to add to their case in Maryville, Missouri. Well, the favorites did what they wanted to today, and the result is another top. Tom, they were efficient on all facets today. They were able to turn field position into points early, and that 17 to nothing lead really propelled them to their undefeated season in a championship today. Don't forget the trophy presentation can be seen at ESPN3. Once again, our final score from Brawley Stadium in Florence, Alabama for the 28th and final time, Northwest Missouri State 43, Lenore Ryan 28. Stay tuned for Sports Center on ESPN2. The Division II Championship Trophy presentation can be seen on ESPN3. Quinn Kesting, John Congemi, our entire crew. I'm Tom Hart. Now to the studio with Jonathan Coach. John can hear me. There we go. They have. Check test. Check test. Check test. 
Check test. Welcome back to Florence, Alabama, where Northwest Missouri State notches its fourth national championship in a 15-0 season with a 43-28 win. Now let's take you down to the field. Standing by with Northwest Missouri State head coach Adam Doral, here's our Quint Kessenick. And we're also joined by Dr. Frank Condino from the NCAA for our trophy presentation. Thank you. Coach, on behalf of the NCAA and all of Division II football, congratulations on winning the national championship. Outstanding. Here you go, Coach. Well, what's that feel like, Coach, now, now that you've got your hands on that? Uh, it's just hadn't sunk in. I'm so happy for our kids. I'm so proud of these 12 guys right here. They've been outstanding all year. I'm proud of our university and community. A lot of hard work went into this, and uh, guys just kept believing. Uh, I want to thank Adidas for what they did for our kids today with the new uniforms. Kendall Whitley, Scott Schneider, thank you guys very much. You, you talked about the seniors earlier. What does it take for a senior class to go 15 and 0? They just got to believe in each other. They've got to do their 111th, and they're a very unselfish football team. Uh, and that starts with these guys. You see that with our quarterback split in time, and that filters right down to our kids. Very unselfish team. What was most impressive about the win today? What were you most pleased with? I just thought we executed and we played to win for 60 minutes, which I think in the big games easier said than done. Now your job, you were everywhere today, calling plays, coaching the old line, telling kick returners where, where to stand. How do you best describe what, what you, you know, your role in this whole thing? Uh, I just try to do my 111th like everybody else. I've got a great coaching staff around me, and uh, I really rely heavily on them and rely on our kids. Let's get uh, Trevor Adams up here. Uh, Trevor. Where's Trevor? Before I get Trevor, Coach, although the fans here can't hear you, uh, at home they can. Uh, is there a message you want to send out to uh, Bearcat fans? Yeah, thanks for your support over the year. Thanks for believing in me. Uh, thanks for believing in our kids. Our community is a tight-knit community uh, that loves Bearcat football. So thank you guys very much. Congratulations, Coach Trevor. Nice job. What were your expectations? You know, you take the field today. It's a championship. What were your expectations? Well, first off, I just want to just say praise God for this, for this team, for our community, what an experience this has been being here. Uh, but, you know, coming into this game, we knew it was going to be tough. Um, with Nora Ryan, you got to give them credit. They've done an amazing job all season. And so, you know, we knew coming in that we just have to keep getting better each week. And that's something we've been preaching all, all season. And, and I think we're able to do that. And I think coming in, we were in the best position that we wanted to be. And uh, so just got to give it to this team, to our coaches, um, and just praise God for this opportunity. You guys jumped up 17 nothing, but they kind of rallied into it. It was 29-15. It seemed like they kind of gained some momentum. What was going on in your mind at that stage? Yeah, and that's the thing is we knew. I mean, those guys have been doing great things all season. They weren't going to just give up once we got a big lead like that. And, um, you know, they fought back and played a great game too. And, and so we knew offensively and defensively we just had to keep, you know, foot pedal down and keep going and keep being aggressive and playing to win you know even when we had that lead and so uh, uh and i think we were able to do that and it was great entire team now joined by the seniors and the, and, the, and the staff celebrating with with the trophy uh you're going to take that back to maryville oh yeah what do you want to tell the people at home right now we're watching we love you guys back home we're so thankful for you we'll see you when we get back home thank you trevor tom hart back to you quinn it's amazing uh, Senior from Odessa Permian has turned this stage into Saturday Night Lights and a Saturday afternoon national championship win with John Kinjemi. It, it was a season of perfection, though nothing is ever perfect in the game of football. They were able to withstand the Lenore Ryan rallies. They were able to withstand it, Tom, but they started fast. And I think that was the key to this football game. They were up 17-0 with dynamic plays. They get the 29-yard touchdown. They get a 
four-yard touchdown early in the game by Billy Creason, but Reuben Thomas broke it wide open, and you have to give credit to Trevor Adams, the quarterback. Did such a good job of protecting the football like he did the entire season for this football team. Adam Doral was the offensive coordinator that called a fourth down pass to win the game in 99. Tonight, he is the national championship head coach. The Maryville native leads the Bearcats to their fourth ever national title and a 15-0 campaign. For Quint Kessnick, John Contemi, our entire ESPN crew, congratulations to the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats. Another trophy headed to Maryville.